All right, continuing with the Triceratops stage here, we're going to start that, and we're going to do that now. Now, the life expansions I showed you in the last one, they don't actually stay between levels, so you need to collect them again. They come from the second and the eighth dinosaur you kill. There, I just got one of them. The Every dinosaur gives you a health bonus except the second and the eighth, which gives you life bar expansions, the ones you kill, obviously, and the fifth, which gives you a free life if you kill it. Every time you get hit, a little bit of chunk of the jeep gets knocked away. It's just cosmetic, but um, it can be interesting if you can actually one-shot the whole thing and not actually lose any anything. Um, and here we've got, again, giant dinosaurs. And this one will try to headbutt you if you let him get close, but usually I can beat him without any serious trouble. You may notice some graphical... Uh, there, I, there I go. You may notice some graphical glitches occurring. This game in particular... Even on the Game Gear, had some trouble with graphics not displaying or displaying poorly, so I, I'm, I apologize for that. But there's nothing I can really do because it's been around for, you know, 17 years now. Here I beat him, and I get to go to the life, and I get another free life for beating that with full health. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, 79,000 points. His points are pretty easy to come by in this game, too, obviously. Um... Triceratops stage ended up in a, in a forest that's having a lot of storms. Volturnus and lightning. Oops. Um, lightning will blast some of the soil away, and then you've got your tornadoes, as you can see. Um, and you want to get under that one, so you want to crawl, as I noted earlier. The fire grenade is pretty useful here, um, because it will kill these dinosaurs in one hit, which most of their weapons won't do, or the concussion buff can't even hit them with. Uh, here, I want to switch back here. <clears throat> so, for particularly fun things you can do in video games that you can't do in real life, you might want to take a look at... Ouch, that kind of hurt. I shouldn't have had trouble like that. For particularly fun things you can do in real life you can't, you can't do in real life, you might you know, jump into burning foliage in the forest. Um, the, you know, the burning canopy. Um, it'll burn away and it give me the room to actually get through the level because that fire on the ground never actually goes out. And I just got stupid. I hit him anyways. You can climb up and down by pressing up or down with jump when you're hanging onto a ledge. And this is necessary at some points in the game as well. There's a free life. These little fireballs move back and forth because they don't deplete the fuel or something. So, again, in the, and in the inventory, you can see those five tokens. If I get ten of those, I get a free continue. So, it's useful for keeping track. Another good place to use the fire grenade. The tranquilizer rifle is good for any enemy you can predict there and meet you that's right in front of you. The concussion grenade's good for any enemy that's coming down at you at, a, at an angle. And the fire grenade's basically good for dealing out any dealing out good damage to anything you know the exact position of in a couple of seconds. I'm going to use the tranquilizer rifle here because it's easier to use on that guy. And these levels aren't very long. <clears throat> this is the Triceratops, which is an easy boss, but it's one of the two bosses in the game that can actually damage you very fast. If you get a take a head-on charge from it, it'll do two damage to you, which adds up really fast because, you, as you can see, your maximum life bar size is only... Five. He'll throw clods of dirt and he'll hit the hit the walls, try to knock you down from the from the canopy above. Now he'll try and hit the wall there, knock me down again. There I got him. So yes, he's he's defeated. Um, it wasn't until I started playing this for this that I didn't realize how incredibly short these levels are and how unchallenging. I mean, when I was, I was six and seven and eight, they were pretty hard, but compared to today, it just it really isn't that hard. It's unfortunate how this game aged so poorly for me. Uh, I've got enough time here to do another level, so I'm going to do the Pteranodon stage, so, which obviously focuses mostly on Pteranodons. <clears throat> so you can see them flying in the background here, which also which uses the same affects the same thing as to where they come out as in the normal driving stages. This one will come down. So you can see them coming in on the sides there. So. You fight the Pteranodon as a boss again on this stage, and um, 
The only thing that's different is that this one drops rocks on you. No, I'm not, and I'm not not really joking about that. It brings in a rock, it'll try to drop it on you. You can shoot it away if you're quick. Um, and then after it tries to drop a rock on you, it will um, try to ram you. Like that. If you do damage to the boss, enough damage to the bosses when they're on their charge mode, they will stop doing it. Though in some of the bosses, in particular the, the boss of the Brachiosaur and the um, noticeably the boss of the Brachiosaur and the Tyrannosaurus stage, uh, once they get close to you, there's basically nothing that can make them back away, which means you need to do all the damage when they're on their approach. Because you won't do it, because if they get close to you, they can burn your life through your life bar really fast. So... And I got hit again. This is proving to be a lot more problematic now than it was when I was playtesting earlier tonight for the to see which codec to use with this. This is my first official Let's Play of anything ever, though I hope to do more of some other games I particularly enjoyed from my childhood in the immediate future of this. Um, whee! So, again, another free life. As you can see, I'm kind of... It's games, again, not too hard in retrospect. Um, this level also feels features some Dilophosaurs, um, which actually didn't really exist, at least not in the format they've been shown in most games. Uh, wrong weapon. I want that one. One thing to notice is that if you press start, in when you select a weapon, if you press start out of it, um, you can actually... No, it looks like it wasn't. That was must have just been a fluke of the programming. Again, I haven't played this game in a very long time, so I'm still a bit caught on some of the intricacies. Now, as you notice, I have a first aid kit, but once you get... they're very hard. There's not a whole lot of them in the game. I'm not using them because the game's not that hard, but um, there's one right there that's pretty hard to get if you don't know what you're doing because these it, the game does not announce that you can crawl on these ceilings. And then there's an extra life over here, which I'm going to grab as well, because there's no point not to have it. Um, the blocks fall down and crush the spikes so you can walk right over. Um, you can see there's also some giant boulders falling down right here. Um, and I'm going to walk down here, because yet another free life down here. And that means I just got a free continue from beating the enemies. So if I go up here, these doors basically actually correspond to exactly where they are out of the when you're out of the caves. So it's it's very easy to navigate once you get a good look around outside. Um, but you basically just want to go up to this far top left as you can, and um, little platforms move around. You have to walk on them, otherwise you're going to fall on the spikes, which does damage. Um, yeah, there's some water in this stage too. Water instantly kills you, as with many older 8-bit games, because nobody could swim. Um, so, you go over here. Up here is another life point, and this is the slowest zip line I've ever seen. Let's see. Um, go off of here. I want to avoid the giant rocks that fall down. Now here we're just focused fighting to run down so the, the concussion launcher is good here. One thing I didn't mention about the concussion launcher is that the longer you hold down the fire button, the farther it goes before it explodes, to the point you can fire it all the way off the screen with that. If it does contact something, of course, it will explode, but otherwise you can keep it going as far as you want. And learning how to use this, how, how to use that particular tactic is especially useful later on in the game against certain enemies. And it's critical to fighting the end, bo end boss. We we fall down a cliff now. Now if you fall off the bottom of the screen here, you die instantly. But after the boss fight, it's not so deadly. And I missed my first shot at the boss there. Now the boss is going to come down in the sides here, so i got to shoot him with this instead. And that didn't work. Got hit. Then it ran like that. Now he'll come down at a 45 degree angle and try to hit me. See that worked. If you, again, if you fall off the bottom of the screen, you fall. It's basically a pit trap. You die instantly. But as soon as you beat the oh, missed. So 
soon as you beat the boss, well, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it's, you know, only a 600 foot drop or whatever. Uh, Pteranodon's been captured now. They've got it in the helicopter net. And I get another 14,000 points for beating it. I'm not sure exactly what effect, what, how the level end bonuses are determined, because it changes a lot. Um, every game almost. So and now we'll do the Parachiostor stage, and because I haven't used a continue, um, we won't have a problem. Actually, it looks like I'm out of time, so I'm going to save state and continue very shortly from there. So one moment.